Michael, you're a historian of science and a skeptic. Talk to me about the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Oh, I think it's one of the grand questions of our time, and uh, I can't think of anything more spectacular than the discovery of any kind of extraterrestrial life, especially uh, something we would call intelligence. But leaving aside the empirical question of are they out there somewhere, which is well worth searching, and the NASA astrobiology program looking for microbes on Mars or whatever, I think what infuses the whole program is something much deeper, almost a religious or spiritual psychological search for something grander than us. I'm not sure why that is. It could be, you know, we've just got this byproduct of our large cortex. It could be we have some sort of need to believe in some higher power, whether it's God or angels or demons or aliens or whatever you want to call them. I think this is what drives us to search for all of those kinds of transcendent beings. Now, you're not putting theologians and philosophers of uh, middle age philosophy and religion in, what, in the same category with scientists legitimately searching for extraterrestrial intelligence, are you? Well, it turns out there's a long history. Uh, the SETI program, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, and the whole institute that's funded and they're looking, that's relatively new. But the, the idea of there being extraterrestrial intelligence is out there somewhere is ancient. Uh, people have been writing about this for thousands of years because I think the idea that there's this sort of uh, chain of being with us at the top and maybe we're not the top. Maybe there's angels and aliens and before there's God. And so what I'm saying is that I, I think there's something that drives us to search for all kinds of things. But in that particular category, there's something driving us to search for beings or entities grander than us. Do you think that search is an artifact, an artificial element of our construction, our evolution? Or do you think that that desire is founded because there is something out there in the universe or in reality which is almost compelling us or drawing us to them? I, I actually think it's a byproduct of having a large cortex that can conceive of things like immortality and eternity and infinity and and spiritual beings and that sort of thing. I also think there's probably an evolutionary significance to it. That is, assuming that other beings have intention is something that we should do with other people because they do have intention. And I think it's a small step and a minor mistake to make that doesn't cost anything to assume that other beings have intention, including other animals, but also spirits that infuse lightning and rocks and clouds and planets and the universe itself and God and gods. And I think uh, to assume that those are entities that have intention was beneficial to us as a species to survive, and it doesn't cost anything to assume that. So you would put on a spectrum the spiritism of ancient humans with the monotheism of our traditional religion with the scientific search for extraterrestrials. I think that the motivation to believe in those things and search for them is the same. Granted, the technology of searching is sure, a completely sure. different But thing. is that an artifact? Yes, I think it's an artifact. So it's artificial. It, it, it's meaningless in the reality. It's a product of our human brain, yes. Why won't you say it's meaningless? Because it, I think... It, because I put meaning as something subjective that we create for ourselves. Fair enough. There, therefore, it's very meaningful. But I wouldn't say there's some Archimedean point outside of ourselves that says that's absolutely right. meaningful. So, so the, 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 the meaning for ourselves is subjective. But for an objective, external meaning, you would feel that this whole spectrum, spiritism, monotheism, search for extraterrestrials, lump it all together. Yes. It's an artificial, artifactual, uh, self-meaning that has no basis in external reality. The, the, yes, that's right. The meaning doesn't have any basis in external reality. Whether they're there or not is a separate question, but the meaning is something we put into it. Okay, let's, uh, let's now go to are they out there. Let's okay. think about that. Now, I guess there are only two possibilities. <laughs> there are either living conscious beings in the universe besides ourselves, or, or they're not. I, I can't think of a third possibility. Is there a third possibility? I don't. Yeah, or just I don't know. And <laughs> well, I, yeah, I don't yeah, know obviously. is where we, we sit here. But right. I mean, in reality, yeah, there's right. only two possibilities. That's right. They're either there or they're not. Now, if that's the case, let's analyze each one. Let's say, let's start with the common scientific view that there are 
aliens and we go through this Drake equation, mm -hmm. the number of galaxies and the number of habitable planets and on and on, and some people come up with very large numbers, tens of millions of mm -hmm. habitable planets of which there must be millions of civilizations like ourselves. Now, from a theological or a, a skeptical point of view, what would that mean? Well, I, I'm, I think theologically it doesn't really matter. You can spin it either way. Uh, although I suppose if you're a Christian, you'd have to assume that those extraterrestrials also had known original sin and somebody like Jesus had to go there to save them. Must have been a busy guy. Uh, busy guy running around all these planets or maybe God <laughs> simply structured those planets in a different way than he, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think it's a big blow to the, theology. I think if we discovered extraterrestrial intelligences and we're actually communicating with them, I don't think theology would suddenly collapse. I don't think religions would quit. I don't think it would make it any difference at all. And how about a, a, a uh, the criticism of religion, the atheistic view of religion, if we have find ex, extraterrestrial intelligence, would that embolden their, uh, their critique of religion? I think it could be used to say that, look, that's yet another example in the long step of material, natural explanations for how we got here. If it happened there, it could have happened here naturally. But the theist could simply argue, well, God can, can create life in many places, not just here. I don't think it's going to resolve anything, although I think atheists could use it that way. Now let's do the reverse. We're alone. We're thousands of years into the future, we've searched every radio frequency and every electromagnetic spectrum, we've searched every part of the universe, we've had radio telescopes on the backside of the moon, nothing, nothing. <laughs> Not a now, where, now where are we theologically or uh, from a, an atheistic point of view? Once again, I think it could be spun either way that the that the theistic point of view could say, look how special we are that God made us this way. The naturalist could simply say, look how special we are that, you know, all these configurations of natural law came about in just this way for it to happen once and only once. Either way, I think it could be argued. And so I don't think, I don't think the, f the discovery or the lack of discovery is going to resolve the deepest questions about, about the nature of reality and whether there's a God or not. I think it's just an interesting question amongst many. Who will, uh, who will feel better if we're alone or not alone? Uh, you, you, you've been on both sides. I mean, you've had an early life where you believe deeply in God and in religion, and then you had your conversion in which you kind of flipped over to the dark side. I've no, no, uh, no, no, uh, 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 I'm a man in black. <laughs> Uh, which, which, which way would you uh, would, 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 would energize your emotions? Oh, I, I, think, I think religionists would find more comfort in us being alone. I think naturalists like myself would find more comfort in there being lots of extraterrestrial intelligences out there. So I think it could be uh, you know, slanted that way slightly. But uh, e either way, I don't think religion is going to disappear or naturalism is going to disappear uh, over that one question.